we have come before you seeking the So you know before you, we have come before you pleading to an investigation team to carry out investigations. And the same is sworn by an affidavit, supported by an affidavit of, of the Inspector Makoma. But essentially, the three grounds were, among others, we are raising. We have been informed that they are armed officers, armed uh, personnel. We want to establish whether they are lawfully tickets to the firearm licensing board for verification of the same firearms they possess. Secondly, we are recording, we are intending to record statements from very critical witnesses on the verification parade. One is from the United States of America and the second one from Ghana. And number four, there are some documentations which we, the investigation team intends to recover from the said respondents. The purpose of the further request for custody, we are dealing with a colossal amount of money, touching on um, 123 million Kenya shillings, one million US dollar, one million US dollars. And it is in relation to a consignment, an alleged consignment of 3,000 kg of pure gold. On the part of the prosecution, we have had a discussion with the defense, the, the respondent's team, that we do compromise, <laughs> that we do compromise the days from the 14th subject the court concurrence to at least five days to enable us to cover those areas. Given some notice of motion with an affidavit of one Alexander Makoma. Basically, we are praying that the respondents be released on first day with whatever conditions the court would give for reasons that there has been no good reason <laughs> adduced by the prosecution that if the accused persons are not released, they will interfere with the investigations of the investigate and investigating agency. <clears throat> Your Honor, we submit that it is not the accused persons who have the capacity or hold the powers relating to the verification of any document in this country. So they are not needed at all. What 
to go with whoever is investigating to whichever authorized agency to do their work. You know, secondly, we submit that the prosecution says they want to have an identification parade, which I'll submit from the world group that would be worthless. We do not know the persons who are supposed to identify them. Accused person, uh, sorry, they are not accused. The respondents have been paraded in open court, full glare of the media. We wonder what would be the work of any identification parade after the suspects or the respondents have been paraded in court and they have been seen. So you are not that does not count. <clears throat> Jonah, uh, if we are to go with what we have been we have seen in the supporting affidavit, these persons should be knowing one another because it was a business transaction. It is not like a robbery case where you do not know the robber. These are people, if at all, who are doing business. So there's no need for identification parade, and therefore there is no basis for holding the respondents in custody to be identified by some unknown foreigners. You know, nothing stops the police from requiring or demanding any document that they want from the respondents, indeed. The respondents were arrested yesterday in the morning. And I have information from my clients that one of the things that was done was to take them around town, pick whatever they wanted to pick, including their funds that were taken. So the documents that are talked about are not itemized. You do not know, the court doesn't know what they are, we do not know what they are. And it would be dangerous for them to be given a blanket um, order to look for things that are not known to us. You know, I'll submit further that good reasons must be laid out for a party to be denied their right to freedom. There is no single good reason that has been given to your honor. I have also not heard the prosecution saying that these respondents are flight risks. They have not proposed notice of motion. Is that the, the parties as named were armed? But truth of the matter is that the first respondent has never been armed, <coughs> does not own a firearm, has never owned one, and was not owned one. Well. The notice of motion points to a search that was conducted. Though vaguely stated, 
it will suffice to say that the first respondent's house of res or residence was searched thoroughly by officers from the DCI. His offices were thoroughly searched and nothing of importance or substance came out of those searches. To continue holding the first respondent in a bid to conduct any further search will be useless, to say the least. There is nothing new they find that they've not already found. On the good faith of the discussion we had with my seniors, turning and throwing me behind the bus when I was making an application for a compromise of five days is the least unexpected from senior councillors. We had filed for application of 14 days. Through their insistence, we compromised on five. Changing the position on their feet is dishonest and unprocedural, although it is their rightful to say so. <coughs> Secondly, with respect to putting the judicial officer as a, stamp, uh, as a signatory of already predetermined document is to ridicule this court. Whatever is attached does not speak to instructing a judicial officer of your caliber to sign in as being alluded by the second respondent's counsel. It is a practice that whenever we do an application, we submit a draft application for the court upon consideration can they lose. And it's the court that signs, the court that grants, and it's the court that determines. We take exception that such a, a practical operational document can be misused to, mis to misguide this court. Number three, Your Honor. The prosecution did indicate we were not retaining the respondents to assist in examination of the documents. All we sought was to ask for the recovery of the said documents which were due for analysis. Paragraph 15 of our grounds of 